Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. I'm Brian McDaniel, and I will be your guide on this journey to the list of the highest yield biochemistry material for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam. This is a bit different than my other videos because I'm not actually going to cover any material in depth. I've already released about a half dozen videos that cover each topic in depth for the biochem section. This video is more of an introduction to the biochem section overall, and really all I'm going to be doing is telling you what topics are and aren't important for the exam. I'm going to be giving that in a list from highest yield to lowest yield. First off, I want to point out that genetics and vitamins have their own separate sections, so you won't find that material in my biochem section. I'm not really sure why those topics always seem to get rolled into biochemistry when the three things seem to be pretty different. So if you're interested, I have separate playlists with seven videos covering genetics and four videos covering vitamins. As I do with all of my videos, I'm going to be rating each topic with a high yield rating. For those of you that aren't familiar with that, it is a score from zero to 10 that gives you an estimate for how important each topic is for the USMLE step one medical board exam. It is based on a number of factors, including how often topics appear on retired step one questions. To learn more about the high yield rating, you can click on this orange box here. We will start with the highest yield biochem material. These are the topics that you're probably going to see at least once on your exam. You've got Cartagner syndrome with a high yield rating of eight. You need to know a little bit about the dining cilia dysfunction, as well as the clinical presentation with things like recurrent infections and infertility. You've got Tay-Sachs disease with a high yield rating of seven. You want to know which enzymes deficient what things build up as a result of that deficiency, and some basic clinical presentation. We've got eye cell disease with a high yield rating of five. You want to understand the problem with mannose sugar tags and lysosomal trafficking, as well as how it can present with things like facial abnormalities and abnormal laboratory results. Osteogenesis imperfecta has a high yield rating of four. You're going to want to know what type of collagen is defective and how it presents with things like blue sclera. Methanol poisoning gets a three. You want to understand some common situations where a person might accidentally consume methanol, some basic information about methanol metabolism and how to treat it. PKU or phenylketonuria, you want to know the basic clinical presentation, the pathophysiology, and some buzzwords like mousy odor or musty odor. The cytoskeleton basics, you want to know the main types of cytoskeleton as well as what their function is, but you don't have to go into too much detail here. Marfan syndrome is going to get a high yield rating of three. You want to understand the fibrillin abnormality, how it presents, and things it's associated with, like aortic aneurysm. And we've got collagen and elastin basics. You want to know the four main types of collagen and some very basic information about the structure of collagen. Now we are getting into the lower yield material. These are topics that are less likely to show up on your exam, but are still probably worth studying. We've got alcohol metabolism with a high yield rating of two. You want to understand acetaldehyde buildup, NADPH buildup, zero order metabolism, and how some of these biochemical pathways can lead to some of the signs and symptoms of alcoholism. We've got fructose disorders with two. It's going to include essential fructosuria, hereditary fructose intolerance. You're going to want to know what enzymes are deficient in those disorders and what symptoms, if any, present from these problems. Similarly, you've got galactose disorder, galactokinase deficiency, and galactosemia. You want to know what sugars to avoid and what enzyme is deficient. Then we've got Chediac Higashi syndrome. You want to understand how the microtubule defect prevents fusion of the phagosome and lysosome, and how it can present with things like recurrent infection and albinism. 
So we've got Ehlers-Danlos. You want to understand how it presents with things like stretchy skin and bruising so that you can identify it and make a diagnosis. Gaucher disease, you want to know the enzyme that's deficient, what builds up as a result of that deficiency, some basic clinical presentation. Neiman pick, same thing, you're going to want to know the de enzyme deficiency, what builds up, and the clinical presentation. Then finally, we've got sorbitol. You want to understand how that can be related to diabetes and things like cataracts if it builds up. Here's a list of some things that fall into the low yield category that I didn't actually cover in my videos. It's primarily because these things didn't fit into a video or it didn't make sense to make an entire video for them. Uh, for example, the glycogen storage diseases, it didn't make sense to make a whole video on glycogen storage diseases because most of that material was no yield or had a high yield rating of zero. But just so you have it available, if you do want to look into these things here, those are the things that, if I was being a little bit more generous, should have gotten these high yield ratings. When you think of biochem, the first thing that comes to mind is probably all of those long pathways that we had to memorize in the past. So the question is, is that stuff high yield for step one? And for the most part, I would say no, but with a few caveats. If you look at any one individual piece of information or disorder in some of these pathways, it's going to be low yield. The odds of seeing that piece of information on there is low yield. However, there's a lot of material covered in these pathways. So if you add up all those dozens and dozens of low yield topics, you are very likely to see at least one of these questions on the step one exam. But just to get that one or two questions right, you have to memorize a mountain of material. So I don't cover any of this material in my videos, uh, partially because it's a little boring. It's just pure memorization. Even if you were to watch the videos, you'd probably forget a lot of it the next day because it's just pure memorization. But also, you'd have to watch four or five videos worth of material just to maybe get one question right on the exam. So I don't think that's really the most efficient way to study. If you do decide to look into these topics in depth, I would at least suggest not memorizing entire pathways every single step. Just focus on the few portions of the pathway that have some sort of clinical relevance, some sort of deficiency or disorder. Now we're getting into the stuff that I call no yield or things that have a high yield rating of zero, which are extremely unlikely to show up on your exam. Now I'm not saying that you should completely ignore this material. What I am saying is that you should not focus on this material until you've at least learned all of the high yield material really well. Um, I'm not going to waste too much time just reading this off. I just wanted to post this here for you. I'll flip through these next few slides worth of this no yield material. You can also look for this list at uh, the bottom of the video in the video description. Here's the second page of the no yield material and the third page of the no yield material. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to know how to speed up my videos or any other video on YouTube, you can click on this orange box here where I will show you how to play videos at 1.5x and 2x speeds, which should help you speed up your studying a little bit if you're using any videos on YouTube. And if you'd like to be taken to a list of all of the available videos I have for the step one exam, you can click on this black box here to be taken to that list. Thanks for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.